Greetings, and uh, today we're going to dive right back into the heart of Christian service. And we're going to pick up on the general theme of our last study and talk about knowing when and how to close a ministry out and move on to something else. Let's face it, not everyone is supposed to pastor the same church for 30 years or teach the same Sunday school class seemingly forever. And guess what? If you sing in the choir and later on in life your voice changes for the worse, it may be time for you to give up singing. It's very important that you know when to move and how to make the move to gain a special joy in your Christian service. Hang on too long or make the move impulsively, this can cause scars both in you and in the church. Fact number one, only the Holy Spirit is indispensable in the Lord's work. The church was here before our ministry, and it will be here long after we're gone. At times, we may feel differently, thinking that people can't get along without us. But if we put our egos aside, we'll quick, quickly realize that those thoughts are pure fantasy. Pastor Warren Wiersbe stated that after 50 years of ministry, and I'm going to quote this, I've resigned from three churches and two parachurch ministries, as well as several boards, and the work not only goes right on, but it's doing better than when I was there. So much for being indispensable. End of quote. Fact number two. People do not like change. And the people we serve will resist change by begging us to stay on the job. Let's be clear here. This is not only because of their great love for us, but because they don't want to go through the pains of looking for a replacement. This, of course, may not apply if there's someone in the group who wants your job. To quote Pastor uh, Wearsby again, don't rock the boat if the, is the unofficial motto of many, many ministries that have long since lost both their compass and their rudder and are gradually sinking in a sea of complacent tranquility. Oh, what are we going to do without you, a church member moaned when I resigned from my first pastorate. Better was my reply, and I was right. End of quote. Many ministries engage in cruise control when it comes to appointing new workers or electing new officers because they find a solace in the security of the status quo and don't want that security upset in any way. People get so accustomed to working with each other, they know where the bodies are buried, so to speak, and they don't like the questions that the newbie may ask. They especially never want to hear, why are we doing it this way? When unity becomes uniformity, it's time for a blood transfusion. A very important yet unwritten rule that we must discuss is that, one, is that we never resign when we're tired and discouraged, we aren't getting our way, or we feel unappreciated and we're looking for some strokes. Let's start with weariness and uh, discouragement. Regret will set in when a servant of God confuses a weary spirit with the Holy Spirit, and then like Elijah in, in uh, 1 Kings 19, cuts and runs. Two of Satan's chief devices for causing uh, Christians to get off track are discouragement and depression. Spiritual director Francois Fenelon called discouragement the despair of wounded self-love. This is a good call, in my opinion. It's very important that at a time when you're ready to give up the ship, that you not make that decision when you are not at your best. And this would go for all decisions, really, all any important decisions. You need to get a fresh perspective on yourself. You need to do something that you like to do. Maybe work out, take a walk, have lunch with a discerning friend, or just relax, pray, and ask God for direction. An impulsive decision is likely to be a wrong one, so you must be patient. Pertaining to disagreements, Ministries are better off without those who are only there because they uh, always want to get their way. Having people around us that resist some of our ideas, not being afraid to voice them, is very healthy, and we should be thankful for them. In matters of doctrine or ethics, however, 
Our integrity was, must always be maintained. It's very important, though, that we not use doctrine or ethics to cover up selfishness or stubbornness. Angry bigots have been known to disguise themselves as religious leaders. In doing the Lord's work, we belong to and need each other. And it's possible to disagree without being disagreeable. No one person can make claim to always knowing the will of God in every decision that has to be made. Paul admitted this in 2 Corinthians 4.8 when he said, uh, only God is omniscient. Discovering the will of God can be compared to putting a picture puzzle together. God sees the entire picture, but no one person has all the pieces of the puzzle. But together, as we pray, meditate on the word, and talk, each of us fits a piece into the puzzle. As we progress, the whole picture starts to become visible to us. When we want to have our own way, it's like forcing a puzzle piece into the wrong place. It's very dangerous to try and change a picture that God has already planned. As Christian workers, we have to learn to accept disagreement and defeat graciously, admitting that others may be right. There is always a place for happy compromise as long as the integrity of the ministry is in question. That's really important. When your best ideas are turned down, it's important to remember two things. First, God will start to change people's minds if and when he wants to expedite your ideas and if you wait and pray. Philippians 3.15 is, uh, is a good reference for this. Second, your ideas may come to fruition after you've moved out into a different ministry. Now, wow, that's, that's a good one. I believe that this may happen when we are prone to taking credit or not giving God the glory and credit for the ideas that we put forth. Not in every case, of course, but man, don't, you, don't we like to take credit for things? Here's the important takeaway from this. It's amazing how much God, not us, can accomplish if his workers don't care who gets the credit. Oh, I got to read that one again. I got to say that one again. It's amazing how much God, not us, can accomplish if his workers don't care who gets the credit. That is humbling. This is a great lead into the third wrong motive for resigning. Namely, we feel unappreciated. And we're hoping that our resignation will trigger some kind of verbal ticker tape parade. Human beings all need to be stroked from time to time. Babies need to be touched in order to feel loved and secure. Love and touch is something that we need and can never outgrow. It's the way God created our bodies to respond. As we mature, we really appreciate a handshake, a smile, a hug, and a sincere compliment. Isn't this true? Mark Twain said that he could live for days on one good compliment. And uh, Paul urged church members to show gratitude to their leaders for the good work they do. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13. Appreciation is reasonable, biblical, and psychologically sound. So you're not appreciated, or even worse, someone else is getting the praise that really belongs to you. Now what? To quote Thomas Fuller, Tomas Fuller, I should uh, pronounce his name. Um, praise, uh, I'm going to quote here, praise makes good people better and bad people worse. And to add to that, we may say that lack of praise can make good people bad if they aren't careful. One calculated risk Christian workers must take is the possibility of being misunderstood and not appreciated. Records in the Bible show us that this happened to Moses, David, Jeremiah, Paul, and Jesus. And be prepared, because it may very well happen to you. This is why we started this exploration service 
Uh, I'm sorry. This is why we started this exploration uh, into the Heart of Christian Service uh, study series, because it's so important that we get our hearts right and lined up with our thinking, getting, getting down to the foundational principle that it's God who is working through you to get the job done for the betterment of his kingdom. If your only motive for serving the Lord is to be recognized and thanked, you better be prepared for a lot of disappointment. But if your motive is to please God and allow Him to work through you to accomplish that which He wants to accomplish, then what others say and do, or don't say and do, will not make a great deal of difference to you, and will not impact you in any big way. Remember, the praise of God will last forever. Testimonial dinners are soon forgotten. I hope that you enjoyed this message today. And I trust that this exploration series is helping you to better understand your motives for serving in order that you may make the adjustments necessary to enable God to effectively work through you to accomplish His plans in a way that only you can. God bless, and we'll see you next time.